Good morning to all my wonderful second graders. Today is Wonderful Wednesday. It's April 29th, and it's wonderful because we get to finish our Magic Treehouse book today, so that'll be fun. It's also Wonderful Wednesday because I get to see all the wonderful work that you've been putting on Seesaw. You've all been doing such a great job with this Magic Tree House book, especially. Your work has been fantastic, so keep it up. I love it. Remember, you can always add other things on Seesaw for me to see. Maybe you would like to draw me a picture and, and take a picture of it and upload it to Seesaw. Maybe about your pet or maybe something that you like to do or maybe it's just a flower or a rainbow. Something else you could do is make a video for me. Um, Tegan did that a couple weeks ago. She sent me a video and she just said, you know, hi, Mrs. Lenning, I miss you. And she read me a story on her video and she did a fabulous job and it was so fun. It was such a nice surprise because it wasn't anything that I had assigned. It was just something that she wanted to do. So if you'd like to do that, I would love to see those. Mrs. Lunning makes you videos every day. So it'd be really fun for Mrs. Lunning to get a video from you. So think about that if you have some extra time and would like to do that. Another thing that you could do is you could watch the 10 Minute Tuesdays. Remember, each staff person at Nevlin chose a special book to read um, on a video for all of the students at Nevlin to enjoy. So that's something else that you can do. And you, you find those kind of like how you find my playlists um, for my videos. You have to go on YouTube and you have to search Nevlin Elementary. Then you have to find the cartoon night, the circle with the night in the middle of it. It kind of looks like a cartoon. So click on that and then the orange banner will come up at the top and you have to find the word playlists. And that's exactly the same way that you find mine. Instead of seeing mine and clicking on that, you just scroll down a little bit more and then you'll find the 10 minute Tuesdays. And all of those videos have already been played. So you can open up any, anybody's video because they've already been shared on YouTube. So if you wanna find a certain teacher that you're missing or if you wanna find, um, anything. Maybe it's a rainy day and you want to curl up with a blankie and just hear a nice story. That would be a fun way to hear a good book. So go ahead and do that. Something else that you can do on YouTube is watch Mr. Askelson's math videos. He has worked really hard to create math videos that go along with what we're learning in math. So videos about bar graphs and picture graphs and line plots. So even if you didn't work with Mr. Askelson, even if you didn't get to leave the room and go to his classroom during math, that's okay. The videos are for all second graders. So feel free to click on his. Make sure you click on the second grade one because he makes videos for other grades too. But find his video the same way you just found the 10 Minute Tuesday or the same way that you find my videos. And you can click on Mr. A's videos and learn a little bit more about math. All right, so let's go ahead today and begin our reading. We're gonna find out what happens at the end of our book. So that'll make it wonderful too. All right, go ahead and grab your book if you haven't already. And I'm gonna put the book under the camera so that we can finish reading our story. And we'll see you in a minute. Yesterday, at the end of chapter eight, we found that the lions finally showed up in the story. Remember, Jack and Annie were ready to go up the tree house to, so that they could go back home now that they solved the riddle. And there were the lions at the bottom of the tree house, right in front of the tree that they needed to climb up to get to the tree house. So let's see what happens with those lions. We're gonna begin chapter nine. So go ahead and open your book to chapter nine and follow along if you can. Otherwise, just listen on the video. Chapter nine is called Tiptoe. Jack and Annie crouched in the tall grass. There was a big lion, three lionesses, and a bunch of cubs. I think they're sleeping, whispered Annie. Yeah, said Jack, but for how long? He pulled the Africa book from his pack and opened it. He found a picture of lions sleeping under a tree. And here's the picture so that you can see that if you're not looking at your book. 
So that would be pretty scary to get up to the tree house when all those lions were right there. He read in a whispery voice. After a pride of lions has eaten, they rest for a few hours. The other, what did they have for lunch? Annie broke in. Don't ask, said Jack. He kept reading. Sensing that the lions are not hunting at the moment, the other animals graze nearby. If they can graze, then we're safe, said Annie. She started to stand. Wait, Jack pulled her down. Not so fast. He peered around, which means he looked around. The words in the book seemed true. The zebras and giraffes didn't seem to be bothered by the lions at all. They might be safe, but I'm not sure about us, said Jack. We need a plan. What if we wait till they leave, said Annie. That could take hours, said Jack. Plus, they might be hungry again by then. Oh, right, said Annie. So here's the plan. We tiptoe, said Jack. Tiptoe? Yeah. That's your whole plan, said Annie. Yeah. Tiptoe to the rope ladder, said Jack. Very cool. Quietly. Good plan, Annie teased. Just do it, said Jack. He stood up slowly. Annie stood with him. They began tiptoeing through the grass very slowly. The lion flicked his tail. Jack and Annie froze. When his tail was still again, they moved again. Suddenly, high-pitched laughter split the air. Jack and Annie stopped. The hyenas were back. They were standing off to the side watching Jack and Annie. Jack and Annie made silent monster faces and shook their fists, but the hyenas only laughed some more. The big lion stirred lazily. He opened his golden eye. Jack felt the hair rise on the back of his neck, but he didn't move an inch. So sometimes when you're really scared about something, the hair on the back of your neck raises up and you've got to get chills because you're so scared. And that's what that means. The lion lifted his head and yawned. His giant teeth gleamed in the sunlight. And here's the picture of the hyenas coming closer and closer. The lion turned his head as he looked around sleepily. Jack held his breath as the lion's gaze rested on him. The lion sat straight up. His piercing yellow eyes met Jack's. Jack's heart raced. His mind raced. He remembered something he'd read. Lions avoid giraffes. Jack looked around. There was a giraffe walking toward the tree that the magic tree house was in. Suddenly, he had a new plan. Get under that giraffe, he whispered. Now you're the one who's nuts, Annie whispered back. But Jack grabbed her hand. He pulled her over to the giraffe and underneath it. The giraffe's legs were so long, Jack and Annie could stand under it. Jack's head barely brushed the giraffe's golden belly. The tall creature froze for a few seconds. Then she moved slowly toward the tree. Jack and Annie walked in the same rhythm as the giraffe. They got closer and closer to the treehouse and closer and closer to the pride of lions. Remember the pride means the group of lions. The big lion had stood up. He watched them moving under the giraffe. When the rope ladder was just a few feet away, Jack and Annie dashed out from under the giraffe to the rope ladder. Annie scrambled up first. Jack followed right behind her. As they climbed, the lion growled and leaped at the ladder. The hyenas laughed. Jack climbed faster than he'd ever climbed. He leaped after Annie into the treehouse. There's that picture. There's Jack and Annie hurrying up the ladder to the treehouse. Annie had already unrolled the scroll. The riddle was gone. In its place was one shimmering word, honey. Because remember, that was the answer to the riddle, wasn't it? 
Jack grabbed the Pennsylvania book. He opened it and found the picture of the Frog Creek Woods. I wish we could go there, he said. Just then, the giraffe stuck her head through the window. Bye, honey, said Annie, and she kissed the giraffe on the nose. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter 10, the last chapter, after lunch. Jack opened his eyes. His heart was still racing. Hyena laughter still rang in his ears. We made it, said Annie. Yes, said Jack, but it was very close. Jack took another moment to calm down. Then he pulled the Africa book out of his pack and put it with the other books. Annie put the scroll with the other two scrolls. The giraffe was the true honey on that trip, she said, sweet and golden with danger all around it. Yep, Jack said, and now we have just one riddle to go. Yep, said Annie, ready, ready. All right, so just look at that for a minute. She said the giraffe was the true honey on that trip. Sweet and golden with danger all around it. Hmm. Okay, you're going to need to know that later. She started down the ladder. Jack followed. When they hit the ground, they walked through the sunlit woods. It's time for lunch, said Jack. I'm full from our picnic, said Annie. Same here, said Jack. What do we tell Mom, said Annie. We say we ate our sandwiches coming back from the store, said Jack. What if she asks why, said Annie. Oh, just say we had a picnic with a Maasai warrior in Africa, said Jack. Annie laughed. Right, she said, because we didn't want him to be mad at us for taking his honey. Right, said Jack, the honey from a beehive that a honey guide led us to. Right, said Annie, and that happened after an elephant gave me a shower and we scared off two hyenas. Right, said Jack, and after you fell into a mud hole because you were helping a million wildebeests migrate across a river. Right, said Annie, and all that was before a giraffe saved us from a lion. Right, said Jack. Jack and Annie left the Frog Creek Woods and started up their sunny street. They were silent for a moment. Then Jack pushed his glasses into place. We better just say we ate our sandwiches on the way home from the store, he said. Right, said Annie, and if Mom asks why, started Jack. We'll just say it's a really long story, said Annie. Right, said Jack, with like 10 chapters. Annie laughed. Good plan, she said. Very good plan, said Jack. They crossed their yard. They went up their steps and through their front door. We're back, Annie shouted. Great, called their mom. Ready for lunch? And that's the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed it. That was a good story too. Does anybody know who could possibly have been the giraffe? Remember we talked about a character in the beginning of the story who morphs into other animals and often saves Jack and Annie in their adventures? I bet if you think back to that, you'll remember that character and what her name was. And you'd be right, it was Morgan Le Fay. All right, today, it is Wednesday. So we're gonna watch my YouTube video as we read chapters nine and 10. So we just finished that. Now you're gonna go back to page 13 and read the riddle. So in your book, go back in your book to read page 13 and that's where the riddle first is read. And you are going to write what the answer is, okay? And draw a picture and tell me on Seesaw or tell a family member. So you're gonna to have to get a piece of paper and draw your um, picture of the answer to the riddle. And we talked a little bit about that in the video. So hopefully you listened to that. And if not, you might need to go back in my video and find that part again. Okay, so that's what you have to do today. All right, good job. While we're, at, while we're looking at our matrix, let's go ahead and look at math. Today, we're going to be doing lesson seven. We started that yesterday. So we're going to do independent practice. 
numbers three through seven on page 569 and 570. And be sure to do the right math too. Now, just like always, we are going to go ahead and correct yesterday's math. So we'll start with that. And it looks like this. And you had to do line plots. Now, remember, a line plot is used to see how often a certain number occurs in data. Okay, so yesterday, when you were looking at your math, we had to tell um, on your other side, well, actually this one right here, we had to tell how often age seven was in his class, age eight, and ages nine, okay? So when we talk about tally charts and line plots, those are both ways to organize and analyze data. And both of them are used to see how often something occurs in data. So in this case, it's numbers. How often did these numbers occur in our data? So on your answers for yesterday, you should have had number one, and your line plot should have looked like this with two here, three at number two, two at number three, and one at number four. And these X's have to match these tallies. And here was your sister's one. And that matches that. Okay, so that's how line plots are similar to tally charts. So hopefully you said something about how they both organize data and they're both used to see how often something occurs in data. And line plots are just numbers, how often numbers occur in data. Okay, so for today, you have to do page 569. So in your math packet, I hope you grabbed that. I didn't give you time for that. So if you need to grab your math packet, now that we've already corrected the first page, but if you need to grab your math packet and get that with a pencil, go ahead and do that. And we will begin today's lesson. So on this side, you just have to use the tally chart to make a line plot. So once again, you're looking at brothers, how many brothers somebody has. So someone has zero brothers, three people had zero brothers. So above zero, you're going to make three X's, just like yesterday. And if you have four people had one brother, so above the one, you're gonna make four X's. And number two, there wasn't any. And so you don't put any X's above number two, just like that, okay? Number four were about cousins, and number five were about aunts. So remember your tally marks are just like an X. So the tally mark is in the tally chart, but on the line plot, you're going to make an X. So each time it has three tally marks, you need three X's above that number. So first you look here, see how many tally marks, and then draw that many X's, okay? Because each X is like a tally mark. So we'll go ahead and do that side. And then on the back, it says, Use the data to make a line plot. So this time we're going to read it. Eli asked 10 classmates how many glasses of water they drink each day. Two people said one. Three people said zero. Three people said four. And everyone else said six. Okay, so these are brain builders. So they're going to take a little bit of time, but this one's not too hard. You just have to figure out what's being said. Okay, so 10 classmates. So that means on your line plot, you're going to need 10 X's. Remember yesterday when Mrs. Lenning caught her mistake after we were supposed to have 10 and I only had nine? That was a big clue that I made a mistake. So if you wanna check your work over at the end, that'll be a good thing to do as well. So 10 people, so you're gonna need 10 X's. So two people said one. So you're gonna need two X's above one. And then three people said zero. So put your X's above zero. Three people said four. So above four, you're gonna need three X's. And everyone else said six. So once you figure out how many X's you have for this one, this one, and this one, then you're gonna need to keep putting X's above number six until you have 10 X's. I'm not gonna do it for you. I bet you can do it without my help. All right, number seven 
Sydney asked 15 friends how many times they exercise each week. The same number of people said one time and three times. Five people said two times. Four people said four times. Okay, so 15 X's is what you're gonna need all together when you're done with your line plot. So once again, you're gonna have to put what you know from reading the story problem. And it says five people said two. So above number two, you're going to want to do five X's. Four people said four times. So above number four, you're going to put four X's. Okay, so five plus four is nine, right? And if 15 people were asked and nine people already, you already know where those nine people go, that's six, right? So how do you split six so that the same number of people said one and three? So above your one and three, you're going to have the same number of X's. So split six into two of the same numbers. I bet you know what that is. And then at the bottom, don't forget to do the right math. Can you use a line plot to show data about favorite color? Okay, now we talked about line plots are only about showing how many numbers occur. So do you think that a line plot can show you about a color? Hmm. You can either say, no, it can't. Yes, it can, because. Go ahead and write that out. And that's your map for today, boys and girls. So once you are finished with your picture and uploading that to Seesaw, if you can, and you are finished with this math, numbers one through seven, plus your right math, you are done for the day. So I hope you have a wonderful day and we will be back together tomorrow on our video. Bye second grade.